Okay, in this video I'd like to show you how to normalize your first order wave function. So in a previous video, and I called it the lowest energy wave function, we worked out that we'll say u0 of y was equal to a constant a times e to the minus y squared over 2. And this was our lowest order wave function. So a of course is a, just a random constant, so we need to normalize it. So what's the condition for normalization in quantum mechanics? So it is the following. If you integrate your wave function from negative to positive infinity, or we'll say the complex conjugate times your wave function, uh, in, one, in one dimension dx, it must be equal to 1. And that physically means that your particle must exist somewhere in space. But in this case, we're dealing with a, uh, we'll say we've, we've made a substitution. We've gone from x to y. And the substitution we made was, we said, and let me just find out where I had my substitution. We said, where did I put it? Oh yeah, I said this. I said that. I'm going to push this up here. I said that y is equal to uh, m omega over h bar, well, the square root of it times x. Okay? Or I said um, del 2 del y squared is equal to, uh, I said that is equal to, h bar over m omega del 2 del x squared. They were my substitutions that I made. So we need to somehow turn, we'll say, this integral into an integral in y. Alright? So it's pretty straightforward stuff. That's pretty straightforward stuff. We're going to integrate from negative to positive infinity. Uh, we're going to integrate u of y, complex conjugate, times u of y. And we're going to have, instead of dx, we need dy. So dx is going to be equal to uh, h bar over m omega, the square root of that, times y, dy. Okay, that's just, you know, um, differentiate this with respect to x. You're going to get dx dy, or dx dy, or how about I do this? It's probably easier if I do it this way. dy dx is equal to m omega over h bar square rooted. So look, bring your x back up here and this over and you're going to get exactly what I had here. It's just a scaling factor. That's all. It's just a scaling factor. Alright. So this is our integral. And what's u? Well u is equal to e to the minus y squared over 2. We have our constant squared now. And is, is this, is our wave function, is it, is it in any way complex? The answer is no. So that means we have e to the minus y squared over 2 here. Okay. So when you have your two exponentials multiplied together you add the exponentials. So this will turn out to be e to the minus y squared, like that. Okay, that's my integral. And now, you know, I suppose you're not really expected to know this, but one of the, a very important integral, and if you're a mathematician, you know all about these. I think it's it's done by contour integration, and I think this one's called Gauss's integral. But anyway, just for, just for your own information, this integral here of e to the minus y squared, e to the minus y squared dy is equal to, uh, it's equal to the square root of pi. Okay? You just, yeah, you just need to know that. You don't need to know how to prove it, but just know what it is. So look, when you plug this back up here and rearrange, you're going to find a, our normalization constant, is equal to m omega over pi h bar to the quarter. All right, it's pretty straightforward. So just, just, just for, I suppose, for a bit of rigor, to find, to, to write down our normalized first order wave function, we know that u zero of y is equal to m omega over pi h bar to the quarter e to the minus y squared over two. All right. Of course, you can scale this to y if you wanted, but I'm not going to do that. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.